What's up guys, it's Average Ol, making average content for the average viewer. And today, I want to give you some more tips and tricks for Warzone for how to get more kills in Warzone. Now, before we go too far into the video, I just want to address the giant elephant in the room. That being, well, me, my ugly mug. Look, I didn't want to make a big song and dance about this being another face reveal. I already have another super super cringy one of those on my channel already so i thought i'd just try this out for a couple videos to see if it works and if it does if you like it give it a thumbs up if not i mean you can dislike it if you want but it does hurt i hope you know that also if you're brand new here or if you're one of the 90 percent of people who usually watch my videos but are yet to subscribe then maybe consider slapping that subscribe button for me it really does help my channel out a lot so Let's talk about my four big tips for how to get more kills in Warzone in Season 4. As a lot of you guys will know, since the Season 4.5 update, we have had a lot of big changes to the game and the meta, which brings me nicely onto my first tip, and that is use the foul. I can't believe I'm saying that, but it's true use the goddamn foul. It honestly absolutely shreds. Now, I'm not going to bore you with huge details about the fire rate because there are hundreds and hundreds of other videos on this on YouTube that probably would explain it a hell of a lot better than this ginger bearded dude. So instead, I want to give you a few tips for how you can actually use the foul to its full potential. Now, the first one is about your controller. For me, I use an Xbox Elite controller. I don't know if that's in focus or not. As you can see, I can change the trigger stops. Just like that. And basically what that means is when I have it off, there's big travel, big travel. And then when I have it fully on, I have very short travel, which means I can spam this trigger like your mate who's shit at the game and always wants you to buy them back, but you can never really be bothered to. So if you don't have an elite controller or some sort of alternative, then there is something really, really simple that you can do that can benefit you a lot. And that is change your triggers to your bumpers. This will work on PlayStation or Xbox, but what it means is that instead of using the long travel on the trigger, you can swap that so it's the bumper, which gives you a super, super short travel, which means you can fire a lot faster. And getting to that top fire rate with the foul is what's going to make it an absolute beast. So if you haven't already, set up a foul class and use it right now. I mean, just stop watching this video, go set up a goddamn foul class and use it because you will get more kills than the opposite of Gandhi. Now, as for a class setup for the foul, there are a few must-have attachments that really do make this gun the beast that you want it to be. And the first of which is obviously going to be the monolithic suppressor. The one downside to this is you do have to grind a bit for the foul to unlock this as it's really late on in its unlock tree. This is easily done by grinding a few shipment matches, but if you're a free-to-play player like I know a lot of you guys are, then I'm afraid it's going to be a little bit of a grind until you can get this exactly how you want. Next on the list is the XRK Marksman Barrel. This is just the standard long barrel that you get for every gun. It will help with your recoil, your damage range, and your bullet velocity, which in Warzone is extremely helpful. One thing to note though, is that usually with this longer barrel, it means you'd go for longer shots. Whereas for our build, we're going to be using it primarily for that recoil control. The foul absolutely shines its best up close and personal. You can use it at longer range, but that is not what we're actually saying you should do in this situation. So we're using this barrel for the recoil control only. Next, I would suggest that you use a sight. Usually on something like a growl, I would stick with the iron sights, but let's be honest, the growl is a bit of an outlier here because it's got such clean iron sights. With the foul there is a lot of visual recoil which means it can get quite blurry especially with the muzzle flash when you are using the iron sights and for that reason I use a low zoom optic like the GI mini reflex. If you watch some of the exclusive ace videos you'll see that actually adding these sorts of sights has no measurable change to the ADS speed so you don't have to worry about that and to be honest it's just going to help you a lot when it comes to those medium range engagements you're not going to have to be looking down some ugly ugly iron sights okay so next i suggest you use the merc foregrip for me this is almost a must-have on every single gun it helps the most with your recoil control it helps a fair bit with your hip fire spread but most importantly it actually has a hidden use and that is that it gives you a plus four percent movement speed 
for average old. 4% sounds like fuck all. Honestly, mate, I thought the same, but hear me out. 4% actually makes a huge, huge difference. For example, if you put the Merc 4 grip on the Uzi with no stock, the Uzi can actually make you run almost as fast as just having a knife. That's nuts. Okay, so the next and final attachment that we're gonna use on the foul is the 30 round magazine. Now this is also up for debate. Look, you can build these exactly how you want. I'm just telling you my best way to do it. And if you think otherwise, then please let me know in the comments. But with a 30 round magazine, that means that you have the potential to kill 10 enemies with one magazine. That being if you hit all of them twice in the chest and once in the head, which I mean, if you're that good and you can get those shots on 10 different enemies in the same mag, you probably don't need my videos, do you, mate? Now, my second tip is more of a hybrid tip for how to get more kills in Warzone, but also how not to die stupidly, stupidly quick in Warzone. Now, in order to get the best out of your performance in this game, you have to reach the mid game as quick as possible. Now, for those of you who don't know, which I mean, you probably should all know this. The early game is going to consist of when you're first dropping. You land in, you run around like headless chickens trying to find some floor loot, you find some floor loot, and then you end up probably getting beaten to death with a pistol by someone. Great. What a lot of people do to try and get their loadout early and enter that mid game early is they land on a scavenger. Now this isn't a surprise, this isn't a secret to people now, which means that quite often you'll see a lonely little scavenger all on its own, you go and drop there thinking it's going to be a nice quiet drop, and then bam, you have four squads all on you, all beating you with their pistols, and you're going to want to throw your controller straight out the window. So what I'd suggest is doing something a little bit unorthodox. Instead of finding that lonely scavenger, go and find a lonely most wanted contract. Now I know that a lot of you will think that the most wanted contract is probably best used when you've got your, all your teammates down, but that usually happens quite far into the game, at which point other players are gonna have their loadouts and they're gonna see you as an easy target for go to go and hunt down. Whereas in the first stages of the game, if you manage to get this most wanted and then loot the area around you, that means that within three minutes, you will have enough money for the loadout, won't have had too much trouble, won't have had too much attention, and you'll be able to get your loadout as quick as possible and start shooting some fools. And that is honestly the easiest and quickest way to get more kills in Warzone is by getting your loadout quicker. Stop landing on scavengers and go for the most wanted. I mean, it's probably good that I don't have a bigger following, otherwise there'd be loads of people landing on most wanted. Do you think big YouTubers actually give false tips to help drive people away from the popular spots? Next tip I want to talk to you about is how and when to use your advanced movement tactics. If you didn't see it, I did recently drop a video about how to slide cancel, which for me is one of the most used mechanics in the game. For those of you who didn't watch that video, I mean, shame on you, but it's okay. I'll leave a link to it in the description. What slide cancelling is, is the act of actually sliding your cancel so you can re-engage your tactical sprint and move a lot quicker. This is super useful for making mad flanks around buildings to get to enemies who think that you couldn't possibly get there in time, getting out of the gas, and making your head as hard to hit as possible for those awful goddamn snipers that would just love to shoot you straight in the face. Now the other advanced movement tactics are things that I'm sure you would have heard of, but I do think that they need to be re-emphasized as they can really help you in gunfights and help you get a hell of a lot more kills in this game. And the first one is going to be jump shotting. Now let me make myself clear. What I don't mean by jump shotting is literally spamming the A button over and over again, jumping around like a bloody kangaroo, hoping that no one can hit you because you're just jumping here, there, left, right, everywhere. That's not what I mean. I want you to learn how to jump shot at the right time. Now, when is the right time? For me, I would always, and I mean always, jump around a corner. I do this for two reasons. A, you get what we call peaker's advantage. Now, if you don't know, peaker's advantage is whereby if you're the person running and jumping around a corner, the server isn't going to update in time for the other person to see you as soon as you jump, which means as you get around that corner, you're going to be able to see your enemy for a fraction of a second before they can see you. Now, if you're using a gun like the Foul, that means in that fraction of a second, they're already dead before they pretty much knew you were there. Now, the second reason that you should use a jump shot is because if you're at a doorway normally and you're about to push in and there's someone in there that knows you're there, they're gonna be sat back holding their guns straight at the door. Now, if you run in and jump past them, they're gonna have to track 
to you before they can take a shot, by which time you've already loaded them full of three other bullets, meaning that you're probably going to win that gunfight too. Now the other advanced movement tactic that I do want to briefly talk about is drop shotting. Drop shotting is probably one of the most controversial things in Call of Duty. Some people love it, some people hate it, and some people just can't help themselves but to lie down in any situation at all. Now, there is an issue with the drop shot. Normally, in Call of Duty, you can drop to the floor really quick and make it very hard for the enemy to hit you. Whereas in Warzone, it takes quite a few bullets to kill someone. That means that once you start drop shotting, once you fall to the ground and the enemy is aiming straight at your torso, there will be a second where your head literally goes straight into their line of fire before they correct it and they follow your head down as you drop. As a result of this, it means that if you're drop shotting someone with decent aim, they're actually going to kill you a lot quicker as if you just stood there right in front of them. Which is why, instead of drop shotting in Warzone, I would always suggest that you strafe from left to right instead. This will make it a lot harder for them to shoot you in the head, which is obviously what's going to give them the best damage per second. Landing the headshots in Warzone makes a huge, huge huge difference. Unless you're using a shotgun, but I mean, just don't use a shotgun. Now the last tip that I want to give you is about the new Gulag, the Sniper Gulag. I know, I know, everyone hates the Sniper Gulag. Now, I wouldn't have normally put this in the video, but since the snipers are so polarizing and some people just cannot use them, I think it's best that I do mention this. Now a good friend of mine who hates sniping with a passion told me the other day that he was in the Gulag and he switched to his fists from his sniper rifle and then went and had a fist fight with a dude. The guy had punched him first and he died. And it baffled me. I was like, why, why didn't you just hit him with your gun? And he was like, what do you mean? It's quicker to hit him with a fist. Like, yeah, it's quicker, but you do a hell of a lot more damage with the butt of your gun. So if you really do not want to snipe in the gulag and you can't stand the thought of it, then the best thing that you can do is just two hits with the butt of your gun. That means that your enemy will go down quicker than if they're just punching you. And unless they like quick scope you in the head, then you're probably going to win. But then if they do quick scope you in the head, they probably deserve to win the gulag in the first place and would have been pretty annoyed if you just bludgeoned them to death. Now my next tip for the gulag is actually quite a specific one. So I'd like to take you back to what I was saying earlier about jump shotting. On certain gulag maps, you can see either the whole way down the left lane or the whole way down the right lane. I think you'll know the ones that I mean. As you know, you will always spawn on the left hand side. So what I would suggest that you do is you run the whole way to the right hand side, jump out about a meter, aim in and take your shot, whether there's someone there or there isn't. Nine times out of 10, your opponent will be hard scoping that lane and just about peeking the corner of where they think you're gonna come from. Like I said before, if you manage to jump over their aim, the chances are they're not going to be able to drag their shot and get you straight in the head, which means you have the opportunity to quickscope them, and then you get to hear them screaming and crying down the mic about how you're a hacker, and how they're going to track your IP address and come away outside your house and pour petrol in your letterbox. It really is a great time. Anyway, that about sums it up for my tips and tricks for how to get more kills in Warzone. I really hope you like it. Now, a lot of you will know that I don't actually usually do this sort of face cam video. I want to know what you guys think of it. Should I continue to do this or would you like me to actually sit down and write the scripts and not have my face in it? Look, I won't be offended if you don't like this nerdy ginger bearded look that I've got going on. It's absolutely fine. But if you want to see more like this, then let me know. A lot of you will know that I love to see who sticks around until the end of these little videos. So if you're still here, I'd like you to let me know by answering this question down in the comments below. If you were told you only had one hour to live, where in Verdansk would you be dropping? Anyway, that's it from me today. I'm Average Joel. Peace. Mm -hmm.